Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an operating system I've never heard of before. Today, we're taking a look at Dalia OS. Now, if you've never heard of this operating system like myself, let me give you a little bit of a background. This OS is still in heavy alpha development. In fact, some things are not even completely finished at all. In fact, it, some things are just completely unusable. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and see if this is a good proof of concept for what could be a very popular Linux distribution in the future. This OS has been in development for, as far as I can tell, a pretty long time, and they just released a new update probably like a week ago, and that was their first update in, I think, like a year roughly. So this has been in development for a long time, and so I'm really excited to share it with you guys today. For compatibility reasons and because they only provided an image and not an ISO, we'll be actually using this on a real machine. So I'm currently screen recording a physical laptop with the USB inserted. So I'm going to go ahead and enter and boot Dalia OS. We can see right off the bat that, of course, it is an alpha operating system. It is running some verbose boot code right now. However, I'm sure, I believe that there is a boot screen, but as we can see, it's just detecting my keyboard, my mouse, um, all the USB stuff, and it's starting the network manager and that kind of stuff. And here we are. So first impressions, this kind of looks like Chrome OS and Windows 11 in a little bit. Um, we do have our options, or like our dock. We do have like our start menu or launcher thing over here in the time. But the center just reminds me of Windows 11 for some reason. Um, but the background is like the orange version of the Chrome OS background, which is pretty cool. So let's just start from going from left to right. This is like our launcher, and it's separated between all the various categories, which is honestly pretty cool. We do have power, um, user settings, and settings down here, which is obviously a very cool thing to have. You can also minimize it into like an actual start-like menu, or you can full screen it, which is very nice. The next thing here is the search, and this really reminds me of the macOS search. Um, it pops up roughly in the middle of your display, and you can just go ahead and search for anything. And so again, let's just we can open the web browser, and that's pretty cool. This button is sort of like our task view in Windows 11. I'm not sure why that white box just popped up. Oh, that's the web browser. Um, the, the background up here is different in the preview. I'm not sure why. Um, and new desktop does not work either. So again, like I said, this is a very buggy build. This is more of a concept than anything, but it is still pretty cool. Next up is files. This, I believe, is a custom-built file, or a custom-built file explorer. Um, honestly, not much in here, but just the window layout, the window border, I really like it. Um, it could definitely be improved, but overall, this is a beautiful window design. Now settings, again, like I said, most of this is still concept. So we can see just about device, Dalia OS 2202.22, Linux 5.17, the desktop, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. And let's just try and enable Wi-Fi. It does not even detect any Wi-Fi. Um, even down in our tray, which we'll get to in a minute, there's no, no Wi-Fi is being shown up. So again, more evidence that this is a concept. Again, Bluetooth, files, blah, 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 blah. Customization, we can change our theme color, light and dark mode, all of that fun stuff. And we can also turn it into like Windows 10 with all of everything on that side where we can center it. You can change window border radius, which is honestly pretty cool. Or you can change the top to have a custom accent, but I'm going to keep it transparent. All of these, I believe, are still not even implemented yet, so they're just blank. But it is a very cool just to see that, hey, here's placeholders, here's what we plan on adding in the future. Next up is, of course, the terminal. I believe this runs just like a regular Linux terminal, and the settings for terminal shows nothing. Pretty nice. The calculator, a uh, pretty standard calculator. I'm not too impressed with it. Um, the number keys on the keyboard do not work for the calculator, but you have to click. The web app manager, um, all we have really, Minecraft Classic, the documentation, which I'd be interested to see how this installs without any internet connection, um, Townscaper, Google, VS Code, and Discord. And this is media. Um, this is like the media viewer. I don't know why these are here, and I don't know what they are. 
placeholders maybe i'm not sure next stop is over here this is the control center is what i'm calling it i'm not entirely sure what it is of course we have our user settings edit sign out power down we have our network settings which again do nothing our bluetooth settings airplane mode settings our language the system theme can be changed from down here which is pretty cool even the dark mode and all the colors do not disturb then there are shortcuts for like new event alpha build and the website system volume and the display brightness then there's our battery and our system time so overall just based on the little stuff that we've seen so far this is a very 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 cool concept and i really am going to follow the development of this a lot just because of how cool it is i mean it's just a concept like that change wall oh there we go it finally decided to work i mean it is a very cool concept that i would actually really consider using as my daily driver of course if it gets more stable but i mean just based on what we've seen and obviously there's not a lot of stuff pre-installed because this is just a concept but I really love this. This could be the OS that could make me switch to Linux if it was more complete. Because I love Windows 11, but I really love this operating system. A little bit more work, and I might be switching to Linux when this officially comes out. If it ever officially comes out. I'm extremely excited to see what the future of Dalia OS holds, and maybe even if it could be used on older Chromebooks to repurpose them sort of how Chrome OS Flex is working right now with older systems. So yeah. Oh, and here are virtual machines. Um, I'm assuming that these are just like, this is just like a concept. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of that app before. But uh, yeah, this was Delia OS. I was really excited to share this with you guys just because it's really cool to see an operating system in development, and I really cannot wait to see what this will look like in, let's say, two years. I think in two years, this could definitely be ready, um, and I am really excited because I love the transparency effects. I love all the effects here. I mean, I could totally go with this as a daily driver. That being said, if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said... Thank you to all these people for creating Delia OS, and I'll see you all in the next one.